Nehemiah chapter 3. <clears throat> then Elisha, the high priest, rose up with his brethren, the priests, and they builded the sheep gate. They sanctified it, set it up the doors of it, even unto the tower of Mia, Mial. They sanctified it unto the tower of Hineo. All right, the high priest and the priest, the sons of Aaron, are going. We're going to read this entire chapter. It's about the wall of Jerusalem, the gates. This gate is the sheep gate where it starts off and where we're going to end off. Most likely, this is where the sheep came in. Uh, we are the sheep. Jesus Christ is the shepherd. With this, this gate is sanctified. It's set apart. Well, those that are sheep of Jesus Christ are to be sanctified and set up. Each, we're just going through the chapters. We're not going into a great detail of... Uh, uh, I mean, each of these gates, you can just preach for a month on this chapter. We're not going to do that. So the sheep gate goes all the way to the Tower of Mahil, then to the Tower of Heniel. You say, why is this all important? Well, the city of New Jerusalem, we're told about the walls, we're told about the streets, we're told about the names of the gates, we're told about the foundations are given names. It's all based upon Jesus Christ. And the high priest, Jesus Christ is our high priest, priest what comes next is the sheep and next unto him builded the men of Jericho well they were the ones that were cursed the city the men of Jericho I mean isn't that interesting that's the first place that Israel came in and conquered when they came to the promised land under Joshua and next unto him builded Zilker the son of Imri it doesn't say Imri but it says the son Oh. But the fish gate did the sons of Hashanel build, who also laid the beams thereof and set up the doors thereof and locks thereof and the bars thereof. Okay, we come to the next one. We come to the next gate. It's the fish gate. Well, Jesus told the disciples, Be ye fishers of men. If you're not a sheep, you need to be fish. You need to be sought out. You, you're, you're lost. You're a goat that we learned the other day from preaching. There's no half sheep. There's no half goats. Only in mythology where there's a goat, you know, goat body and a man and a man's body to it. And this one right here, they have locks and beams to keep those out that don't belong. Next time to him, repaired Merimoth. The sons of Ujiah, the son of Kohs. Next on him repaired Meshulam, the son of Barakiah, the son of Meshazibio. Next on him repaired Zadok, the son of Benah. Well, now these next until you, until you go from gate to gate. In between these are men that are building the walls. The wall, there's certain walls that just don't have names. There are some that do. There are towers. There are gates. There are places. And there's sometimes your work and your life here on this planet Earth, you know what? It's just unnamed to others. I mean, when you get street preaching, what is the the main road there in, in Las Vegas for Brother Baron them to people in China? What is the ocean walk to people in Germany? What is the land to people down in South America? Nothing. But what what is lifted up is, hey, there are people out there going out for Jesus Christ, and that's more important than where they're at. They're, at least they're doing something for the Lord. And when you hear about in other countries where people are doing something for the Lord, and you know it's blessing that this missionary, this evangelist, somebody is out there at this church, they're doing something for Jesus. I may not even be able to pronounce the name of the road or the place they're at, but there out there are people out there doing something for Jesus. So you don't have to know the name of the place; you just have to know people. And when you read some of these missionary letters, and you know you can't, like you're trying to read the Old Testament. It's, there are people out there doing something. 
So these are wall. These are sections of the wall that are being rebuilt. And next unto them was the Tikkanites, or Tikkanites repaired. But their nobles put not their necks to the work of their Lord. Oh, you mean the Tikkanites, they were there doing the work and all that, but the leaders, the, the rich people, uh, there, there's an expression to have something that comes to mind, but I can't say it because I'm a Christian. They only put, they didn't put their full thing into the work. We did, you know, we moved a couple of rocks and... Oh, man, I sweated. And I had to go sit underneath the tree and drink some water. What's that tell you? What does that verse tell you? When you're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ for some Christians. Well, they did something, but they didn't put their heart into it. And what classification does that run under? He is going to be... His, Two categories, wood, hay, or stubble, or gold, silver, precious stone. I like what the brother said on the, on the thing last last night. He said, maybe you'll get a little coin. Uh, that, that I really don't even think that. Right? I don't think by accident you're going to get anything. Because I know what the guy is saying, but... Can God reward you for being unrighteous? Can God reward you for being unholy? What if you did sit down, and the only thing that comes to my mind for illustration, during the hippie era, what if you did become a hippie and smoked the dope and did all that, and a few of them became, you know, saved of Jesus Christ? You going to get a reward for that? God records in this big, long chapter here about a bunch of walls, a bunch of gates. and all that. You know what? They did a half-baked job. That's interesting to know how God records. Moreover, the old gate repaired Jeodiah, the son of Peshia, and Meshulam, the son of Besidoia. They laid the beams thereof and set the, the doors thereof and the locks thereof and the beams thereof. The old gate. Well, we've had the sheep gate, we've had the, the fish gate, now we got the old gate. One of the original gates, one of the ancient gates. You don't forget the old. And America's forgotten her old. They stick them off into some home somewhere. Now listen, there are cases where... It, You've got to put a loved one in a, in a care like that. If, if they're going to destruct themselves, if they're going to do something that, that will harm themselves that they cannot be totally on their own. But they're just, let's just put mom or dad in there so we can go have our fancy kind of free life and stuff like that. You, you can't forget the old. Matter of fact, the old, they have a lot of wisdom. They ought to be heard, sat down with. But who wants to deal with that? They need to be listened. The next sentence I'm repaired, Methiah, and I'm sorry about these names, but the Gidonite and Jadon the Merdarathite and the men of Gibeon and of Mizpath, that's a city or town, unto the throne of the governor on this side of the river. So there was a seat of authority in the land where they were to give answer to. I believe it was Nehemiah, the last chapter, that he went to these people when he arrived in the land and said, hey, here's the king's orders, here's his papers, I'm to report here, I'm to, to do what I'm supposed to do. They just didn't, you know, have a bunch of people over there and, you know, there was a throne, there was a, there, there was authority. And the Bible says you're to obey that authority. Should be a king authority. Should be a, a Jewish king sitting in Jerusalem, in the throne of Jerusalem. But it's not. It's a Gentile. Next on to Henry Pell, Ezeel, the son of Harthia, uh, the goldsmith. Oh, here's a bunch of guys. I mean, they work with gold. They do all kinds of things with gold. And now they're, they're picking up rocks and stones and mortar and whatever it takes to build a wall. Aren't they far-fetched from where their job is supposed to be? They take this gold that is the, the greatest of the gold standard. It's above silver. Gold was the, the top of the, the head of, of the Nebuchadnezzar's dream. It was the, you know, the values. It's the streets of gold that we're going to walk on 
Gold is the highest form. Here these guys work with it, and their job to build the wall is they're picking up these stupid little stones compared to their job. From gold, and gold is a dust, gold is a stone, from the highest value, here they are picking up just rocks. That says a lot. They're not ashamed to work for the Lord after what they've been working with. Next unto him also repaired Hananiah, the son of one of the apothecaries. Now these are the druggists. Not like when you go into a drugstore today and they just put 50, bottle, you know, 50 pills in a bottle. Here you go. You got to wait 40 minutes. These are the guys where they would mix the herbs, mix the medicine. They, I mean, the doctor said you need a They had to make it. It wasn't in a pill form. It didn't come from a factory. They had to produce whatever, the, whatever was needed in your life. And a lot of times they were also the doctors. At least in early America, not America, excuse me, in, in Europe, in the United Kingdom, in England, you didn't go to the doctor, you went to the, I can't think what they used to call it. I'm going to say druggist, but there was another name they had. And he would tell you what your ailments was, and then he would give you the medicine right then and there. And he had to know everything. He had to know if I took this and this and mixed it together, that's not going to kill you. Today we have computers to tell you that. Because a doctor who's an idiot gives you a prescription, and if you mix it with this prescription that you take, it's going to kill you or it's not going to work. So they're the, they're the druggists. These were also the ones that God called that would make the special anointing oils and the special incense. Here they are moving rocks and timbers with their hands. They have to, you know, mortar out medicine. They work with rocks too, because the pestle and the mortar were were ivory, were rocks. It was marble. So, like the goldsmiths, they've been working in rocks. That, I mean, valuable rocks. And now here, pushing a bunch, you know, bricks and stuff like that. And you can't get a bunch of people to show up for a work day at a church for that. And they fortified Jerusalem unto the broad wall. Okay, broad wall. Here, here's the name of the of, of a wall. Broad. It's a long span. It's a it's a big wall. And Jesus said, "Broad is the way that leads into destruction." And what does most every single city, major city, have? They have a Broadway. And they usually on that Broadway are all the theaters and all the junk. And all the sin. If it's not called a Broadway, it's called a Main Street. You can't get out of the Bible. And next unto them repaired Matthiah, the son of Hur, the ruler of the half part of Jerusalem. Here's a guy that owns half of Jerusalem and he's out there working. Everybody's involved in this city wall. And next unto them repaired Jedediah the son of Harmapha, even over against the house. And next unto him repaired Hatches the son of Hashabiah, Benaiah. Mahachal the son of Hemon, Harim. And Hashub the son of Path of Moab. Moab. That's an interesting name in there. Repaired the other piece in the Tower of the Furnaces. Okay, here's a tower. Look out, look for the enemy. And there's furnaces for making clay, for making for the metal work, whatever fabrication that you need a furnace for. The next time to him repaired Shalom, the son of I mean, if we were going to detail study, we could probably find out what exactly what these furnaces are, but we're just going through. We're doing a you know a, a quick study of each chapter. We're not doing in depth. And the, uh, okay, and next time they repair Shalom, the son of Hash, Halosh, Halosh, the ruler of the half part of Jerusalem, he and his daughters. 
Well, we just read about a ruler. In verse 9, it said, Raphael, the son of Herod, the ruler of half part Jerusalem. And here is Shalom, the son of Hel, the ruler of half part of Jerusalem. So I guess if you put these two guys together, you got a full rulership of Jerusalem. They're out there working. And look at this. He's got his daughters working with him. Is it wrong for a woman to do garden work and stuff like that? Read with Proverbs chapter 31. No. It's wrong for a woman to go out and, and be the breadwinner. Is it wrong for a woman to go out for a job and, and to, to help with the finances of the house? No. Not with the kind of economy we have today where, I mean, it has to. One job can't cut it. But here are daughters working. They're not doing their nails. They're not printing their their hair. They're not. They're out there in the dirt, in the rocks, in the mortar, fixing the place up. They got something to do. They're not lo loitering around the cities, you know, causing all kinds of trouble and having their face plastered on a wall where they can't be anywhere no more, and just causing all kinds of trouble. And the police know their name. The police know where they are, but the parents don't. This guy knew where his children were. Just look over. Probably faith enough daughters. If one daughter wasn't there, she probably went and got water or probably in the back, you know, faithful. And God recorded that the family's working together here. You think God's recording us as a family. And when we go into a church or we go to another church, and when there's a family in that church that failed, God's going to say, listen, what about that family over there? What about them? They're over there working in my word. Why didn't you go seek them? Why didn't you go ask them? I don't care what other people say about that family. I recorded that family works together. Let's put it down. I see that guy's wife. She's got a bad bag. It looks like a railway crash. Uh, much more in the disaster of these railways that crash. She sits down the street and she gets picked on for not standing up for the gospel. What are you doing? What do you do? I see he's got a young young man down there. He's out there passing out tracks like this and that. And what, oh, You don't like the bumper stickers. What, what, what are you doing? I see this guy's little girl down there with a sign in, passing out gospel tracks. Well, what, what, what's your family doing? Where is your family? What kind of mess are you guys in? But his family's working together. For me, by the way. That's what he's recording. The valley gate. Everyone goes into a valley. This is not a popular gate, I would think. You're way down and everything you want to see, you got you got to look up. Who wants to be in a valley? Though I walked in the valley of shallow death. Well, guess what? If you're a born again Christian and you're doing what God tells you to do, if you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, God is with you. I'd rather be going through the, shadow, the, the death with the Lord and having life and not have the Lord be with me. There's a valley gate repaired. Hanum, the inhabitants of Dana, they built it, set up the doors thereof, the blocks thereof, and the bars thereof, a thousand cubits on the wall onto the dung gate. I mean, who, who, who would think to put locks on a valley gate? Well, that's where death comes in. That's what happened to Babylon. They drained the river and they came under the city. But the dung gate repaired Malkua, the son of Rechab. The ruler of part of Beth Hagrium. He built it and set up the doors there, the locks there, and the bars there. Now look at this one. You know where I'm going to go with this one. If you don't, I'll show you where. All I do is clean the bathrooms at the church. Who cares? God does. 
You know what dung is? And this is one guy. He said he built it up, set it up. And he was a ruler. Imagine this sophisticated guy down there in the most stinkiest gate. Where all the, you know, what they did in Jerusalem was they would wash the entire city down. Especially during those three feasts. And when every man was appeared, they would wash the city down. And all the junk, all the filth would go over through this one gate. There were times in England, in Europe, I don't know if it would happen here, but there are times in England here, they would take bedpans and scrap pans and every kind of uh, thing they pan. They'd just throw it out, out the window onto the street. And they would have wild pigs and dogs and, you know, a guy coming along cleaning the streets and all that. Trash and, and unmentionable things would go through this gate. But here's a noble cleaning, setting up. Taken care of. God takes care of those who clean the bathrooms. And we go from the dung gate. Look at this one. Isn't this great? But the gate of the fountain repaired Shemnua, the son of Kohaz, the ruler part of Mizpah. He built it and covered it and set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, the bars thereof. And the wall of the pool of Shalom, that's where the guy who laid on the bed, and when the angel came and touched the water, whoever the first one to go in. Oh, we're right where Jesus will be. Isn't that interesting? By the king's garden. Oh, garden. We, you know those things about gardens, don't we? Onto the stairs that go from the city of David. Well, that tells you a lot what just happened where Jesus was. But we go from dung to a fountain. Now, that's not a contrast. We smell water down here that people wanted to It's like, whoa, who? Woo -hoo. And that's not even sewer water. But it sure smells almost like it and we go from that we go to a we go to a fountain where people would get water where there's probably beauty and here is this pool where Jesus Christ would walk do you know what was probably on on the floor of the stable where Jesus was born you know what Mary and Joseph would have to walk around in that stable that night Poo poo, thinky, and goes up to the city of David. After him repair, repaired Nehemiah, the son of Azbuk. It's not the only Nehemiah, the book. The ruler of the half part of Beth here, here's another ruler, under the palace over against the sepulchres of David, and to the pool that was made, and unto the house of the mighty. Now here's a guy, he's a ruler, he's building this part, and he looks over and there's David's tomb. I wonder what he thought. Well, we've come a long way since you, David. In your time, all this was built up, you built up more, and your son came along and built that, that, tab, that, that temple, and wow. I guess the old expression was, David, if you were to come right now, you'd roll in your grave. What would you think if the Bible says when Jesus died on the cross, the graves were opened up, the Old Testament saints came up? What do you think David would have came out of his tomb right there and saw Jerusalem like it was? What do you think he would have done? What about Solomon? The sins of all his wives... And he were to step out of that tomb at this moment, Nehemiah, look at him and say, wow. Yeah, but you mess around with sin today, and you'll die if the Lord tarries. You'll be in the grave. You won't be around. And your sin will still be out there for others to suffer. 
I tell you, there's a mighty sin going around today. It's with our children in the church that they're not training them in the Bible. They're not training them on the preaching. They're not training them at all. And tomorrow, when we're dead, the Lord to tell you, we're in, the, we're in with Jesus Christ, with, you know, absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. And the church is going to be absolutely filthy, disgusting. That you got to pay the kids and give them entertainment. And that's going to be the church's future if the Lord is to tarry. That's the future. But, oh, we were to look back and see what would the damage we would do. But we don't look back. We have to then repair the Levites. Boy, we come a long way from chapter, uh, verse 1, the high priest and the priest, but here are the Levites. They weren't priests, but they were the priestly family. Rehum, the son of Benai, next unto him repaired Heshabiah, the ruler of the half part of Keliah, and his part. After him repaired their brethren, Bevevi, the son of Hadad, the ruler of the half part. I wish these names would just stop. I get my tongue all tied up. This slap, who, that, who, he, ah, who. You know, the Bible says we're all going to get a new name. I mean, these, these idiots that want us to put us back in the Hebrew and Greek, you can't say the Hebrew and Greek. I have enough problem with English. You want me to go back and, oh, boy, I'll get you back. You know, you want, you want me in a, in a Hebrew and Greek church and you give me another child, I'll name that child the most longest name Hebrew I can find, and I'll have you dedicate that baby. You want to talk Hebrew and Greek. My tongue is stubborn over the Hebrew right now. Verse 18. After him repaired the brethren of Bethlehem, the son of Hadad, the ruler of half part of Keliah. The next unto him repaired Ezer, the son of Jeshua, the ruler of Mizpah. Another piece over against the going up the armory at the turning of the wall. Okay, the wall's turned. Before it turned, there's an armory where all the weaponry is kept. Now, if you want to do a study... You run the city names and see how many come back. You run these names, and like I said, we're not doing a complete study. Some of these names show back up again. They not only do one section of the play, they go and do another section. And then there's just some that just don't do nothing at all. But there are some people who are dedicated. There's some cities and towns represented in here. Mention how many half rulers, how many rulers, how many that are in this building here. And you get these expensive churches, you know, where doctors and lawyers go to, and they don't do a flip to do anything for Jesus Christ but cause more trouble and problems. You're without excuse. Oh, verse 21, I believe. Now, verse 20. And on him Baruch, the son of Zebuai, earnestly. Well, that's the first time that word showed up here earnestly repaired the other piece from the turning of the wall into the door of the house of Elisha above the high priest. Oh, you mean Elisha was not working on his own house because he shows up at the sheep gate, verse 1. The high priest ain't working on his own house, his own wall. He's concerned about the sheep gate. Someone else will take care of his. Look at that. When you got a pastor of your church, you ought to take care and, and help him with his house and his work. He's over there working with the sheep. Did you get that? He's over there working with the sheep. You be working at his house. But he better be working on the sheep and not doing any other things for you to be working on his house. A lot of people got their shepherds working in other places. They're starving them. That ought not be right. You're supposed to take care of your pastor. High priest here, but if we were to bring him to the church age, it would be the pastor of the church. Verse 21, after him repaired Merimoth, the son of Ujiah, the son of Coles, another piece, from the door of the house of Elisha, even to the end of the house of Elisha. Two people are working on Elisha's house. Or at least the gates and the doors and the walls. 
After him repaired the priest, the men of the plain. After him repaired Benjamin and Hashabah over against the house. After him repaired Azariah, the son of Meshu, the son of Enai, by his house. He said, Brother Stalin, you're getting these names all messed up. You're just, you're just doing a terrible job. Yeah, but you know what? I'm going to get credit for reading a chapter that people don't ever read. I'll probably get to heaven and have one of these guys put his arm around me and tell me how easy his name was really to say. Then he's going to ask me what my name is and how to say it. I know how it feels to have a weird name. I get a point. I, 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 when people say, "What's your name?" I, I try to avoid the question all possibility. And I'm going to get to, "Huh, I'm silly, fuck, why, what?" I, I'm in with these guys. I got a weird name. I got a non-name. Okay, verse 24. After him repaired Benui, the son of Hinnadad, another piece, the house of Azariah, unto the turning of the wall, even unto the corner. You could probably lay these things out. Way to tell you, the turning of the wall. I mean, the wall turns. Hala, the son of Uzai, over against the turning of the wall and the tower. Oh, here's the tower, which lies out from the king's ho high house. King's high house. Hmm. I'm wondering if that's where David took his little walk. I don't know. Just throwing things out there. That was by the court of the prison. After him, Penaniah, the son of Perish. Gotta make sure you get that prison going because. All I'm sitting coming short of the glory of God is going to be somebody going to need to be put in there. Prisons are in the Bible. So is capital punishment. More with the Nethanims. Well, look at that. Those are the guys that, that helped out the Levites and the priests had all the dirty work. They show up. Well, in Ophel, unto the place over against the water gate, and that's not where Nixon and his, his family got all messed up over there, but there's a water gate. Well, we had a fountain gate. Here's a water gate. Here's where the water would be probably drawn. doesn't say a river. It says water gate. Toward the east and the tower that lieth out. That means the tower is, is, is away from the wall a little bit. It's sticking out a little bit. It's, it's put in a position that it needs to be look over for enemies. It's a sticking out kind of tower. After them, the Tickleites. Hey, we've heard of them. They were back there in uh, verse 5 where their nobles didn't want to work that hard. Repaired another piece. Oh, so the Tickleites did another job. Over against the great tower that lieth out even unto the wall of Ophel. So when the Tychonites were done with their job, they didn't go home. They went up and said, okay, where else can we work? What else can we do? The job ain't done to the wall. is completely done. You know, there are Christians out there. Okay, come noon. See you next Sunday. What about Sunday night? What about Wednesday night or Thursday night? What about visitation night? What about, I did my part. God's pleased I'm here today. The ticket nights, we've been there Sunday night, Sunday school, Wednesday, <laughs> prayer Saturday night. They would have been there. Work party, be there. From above the horse gate. So there was a gate where horses came in. Repaired the priest, everyone over against his house. Ooh, look at that. Who repairs the horse gate? The priest. And who comes back after the horse comes? Who follows that horse when Jesus Christ is sitting on? We the priest, the Bible says in Revelation chapter 1, we're called priests and kings. Let me ask you a question. What do you think what gate that Jesus Christ may be coming in? You want to take a, you want to take a guess of any of these gates? He's not coming through the dung gate. What do you think what gates he's coming in if you want to study? I studied the horse gate. I believe that comes back several times, not several times, but a few times in the Bible. Hmm. 
By the way, what gate have we not read about that's mentioned in Scripture? Well, not, well, not, no, that's not mentioned yet, but you know, you have not found an eye of a needle gate. You know where the camels go through? It's easier a camel go through an eye of a needle. Than, and th that they say that there was a gate in Jerusalem. There was a very tiny little gate, and the camels would have to duck down to get. There's no eye of a needle gate here. Actually, there's only two. There is two gates that are not mentioned. I don't have the name here, I don't think. Let me check. Uh, I believe it, one gate is called Ephraim, I believe. I'll have to check on that one. But there, there is actually two gates that are not mentioned in this chapter here that are in the Bible. And it's not one of them. It's not called the Eye of the Needle Gate. Alright, so verse 28. From above the horse gate repaired the priest, everyone over against his house. Oh, so the priest lived by the horse gate. Can I say it? Can I please say it? Let me say it, please. When it comes to priests, Revelation chapter 1, that we are, Jesus says we're priests and king. There ought to be no horsing around. <laughs> it's supposed to be a place of royalty coming through. It's supposed to be, you know, the horse is an a, a animal of war. It's an animal of work. It's an animal of transportation. It's not a merry-go-round. After them repaired Zadok, the son of Immer, over against the house after him, repaired also Shemaiah, the son of Shechemiah, the keeper of the east gate. Now, they're not working on the east gate, but he's the keeper of the east gate. You see how people are not where they're supposed to be, but they're where they're supposed to be in order to do the work of the Lord. He said, what's that all about? Well, who do we go downtown with? The Land Bible Baptist Church, Pastor Knox. Now, are we part of them? Are we, are we members of that church? No. But we come out of our church to join them on the street, and you think God said, well, you're not going to get no credit because you're not part of them, that, that, that church. No, it don't work like that. These people go to Faith Baptist Church. They're working with the Bible Baptist Church in the land. They're working. How do you like that? You can be out of place as a Christian and still be in place. When we were going to the other church, we were definitely out of place. And God was recording, yeah, they went there, but they were also over there doing my will. What the scriptures say. One place they take the stones and rocks and throw them at us rather than build a wall. What did the guy say that yesterday? In the, what Peter said about stones? He said we're lively stones built up. They're over here. Listen, you imply this to the New Testament. They're picking up stones, they're building the church. East gate. So he went out of his way to do the work for the Lord. After him repaired Han Hananiah, the son of Shemelua of Henan, the sixth son of Zaphon. Look, the sixth son, not the first, second. Th God records exactly who and what. God's a great bookkeeper, I'm telling you. Another piece. Well, God didn't tell what piece I fixed. It's another piece. Well, Hayward family, how many people got saved since you guys have been downtown working? I don't know. I have no idea. You're a failure. We had 500 people saved in our meeting, and 22 baptized, and 14 called into the ministry. I'll know when I get the judgment seat of Christ. 
I'm not doing it for numbers. God doesn't tell you what God does not tell you what kind of rocks are put here. God's not the you know rock number four hundred eighty seven thirty six goes right next to four hundred eighty thirty six seven. Right next to four hundred thirty seven three eight. He doesn't tell you that. There's no numbers here. They're just doing their job. And then when they're done, they step back and then they see the finished work. Like, oh, what? look at that. Look at, check it out. But when you're doing the work, you can't see all around. You don't see the whole city. But when the Lord calls us all home, we step back, then we see the results. And after him repaired Hanani, the son of Shemuel, the sixth son of Zalphim, another piece. After him repaired Meshulam, the son of Barak, Shudai, over against his chamber. Well, sometimes you got to work by your help. Sometimes you take care of the pastor. Sometimes you take care of the church. Sometimes you take care of your portion. Don't let your yard go uh, misplaced. After him repaired Melayim. I am, my tongue is not doing it no more. Micaiah, the goldsmith's son. The goldsmith's son, where, where do we read the goldsmith? His father was over there working on the other portion of the city. He's over here by himself or with another group of people. He's doing the work. Daddy didn't tell him to go to work, but he's working. And God says, the goldsmith's son. In other words, the goldsmith raised his children right where God said, he raised that child the way he should go when he departs thereof. Look at that. And the place of the Nephilims, now Nephilims, they were over there somewhere else working. And someone's working on their place. What's that one? And there are people in the church who can't take care of their property no more because of age or physical disabilities and stuff like that. Go over and help them out. Miss Smith broke her leg. Go help her out. Mr. Smith, I mean, he, he, he's got an off right. It's terrible, and he's just having a bad week and a bad month, and just go help him out. No one in a Bible-believing church should have to pay a kid on the street to mow their lawn or pray somebody to do the work for them. You ought to go over there and say, hey, you're a member of my church. I love you. I pray for you. I'm going to help you out. They're going to give you 10. No. I don't want the money. I'm doing it because I love you. I'm going to give you 10. I'll tell you what. Whatever you give me, I'm going to put in the pot. And Lord and I, and the Lord and you and I, that part, and I'm going to put it in the plate. If you give me any money. But I'm here to help you out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. Now, if you make some business where they're healthy and like that, roof or something like that, then yeah, okay. Charge for the labor, charge for the materials, stuff like that. But when they're down and out and they can't do something, don't charge them. Do it for the Lord. Do it by your heart. And when the merchants over against the gate, I hate how they break the words in half here. And to the going up the corner, the merchants are helping. And between the going up the corner of this sheep gate, here we go, right back where we were, repaired the goldsmiths. Then we already see them working? I'm not done there. And the merchants. Who was working on the sheep gate? The high priest. So the high priest is working in this part of the sheep gate, go all the way around the city. We come back, and here's the goldsmith working on the sheep gate. And the merchants. Do you know what gold represents when you hit the judgment seat of Christ? It represents that high priest, the Lord Jesus Christ. What is, what is in the company of the high priest at this sheep gate? The sheep, the high priest, and the goldsmiths. 
and the merchants. I can't place the merchants. Those people did business. We've gone all the way around the city and I didn't sweat one bit. And this is a this is a chapter here. If you you want to get a pen and paper, names of people, names of city and places, their position, the name of the I mean, this is a a chapter. I have heard messages on this chapter. I mean, it just fill album tape albums. We can go into it real real deep. I mean, sheep alone. It didn't say sheep and wolves gate. It didn't say sheep and pit. I'm, I'm backing up our pastor's message from Sunday. It was the sheep gate. And guess what? Who is at this gate? The high priest. Well, what happens when the rapture comes? All the sheep go through the what? The door. There he is. What did our pastor say? Not only is he to open the door, but he opened himself because he is the door. And who's there with the who, the porter? Well, who's the porter? The goldsmith. <laughs> and it'd be probably interesting if you could actually lay these gates and see and to find out which gate is opposite. Wouldn't it be funny if the opposite of the sheep gate? Now, I don't know. You, this may not. I'm just saying. Well, what if the opposite of the sheep gate was the dung gate? <laughs> In other words, if you were to stand at the sheep gate, turn around and look back, and then you see whatever gate, and what would be funny? It would be the, be the dung gate. I don't know. But you get the order of these sheep, I mean order of these sheep, order of these gates, you go from the sheep gate unto the, the fish gate. Well, that's interesting. Fish. What kind of gate is that? That's an interesting study. Because fish are not sheep. I don't care if you put it in the back of your car. Jesus said, be fishers of men. The representation of a fish is a reptile. I wonder what a reptile is in the Bible is. Gee, serpent, dragon. Sure ain't no Christian. Fish is brain food. I trust Jesus Christ with my heart, not with my head. You use a worm to catch a fish. And the worm dieth not. When Peter and them are fishing and Jesus Christ is standing on the on the seashore, where are the fish? In the fire, being cooked. When Jesus feeds the five thousand, what does he feed them with? Bread and cheese? No, bread and fish. What's the Roman Catholic Church tea? Oh, we drink blood and bread, fish, on Friday. Well, didn't you read over there in Psalms where it said that, that, that God pierced the, the Leviathan and from the pierce of his head he fed it? You, know, you can run the scriptures. Nehemiah chapter 3 is an interesting, very great. I'd love to get into it, but I ain't got the time. Woo wee, I tell you. And we'll break it down there. It's an interest study. If you want to take on your own to study, there's a lot of meat in that, that chapter, that one little chapter. People, places, events, nouns, verbs, adjectives. That's a chapter that you could probably just do all eternity on as we close. And a connection error on that one. 